What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin, and today we're coming in with a video talking about my top 5 bucket list substances to do in 2020. Hope you guys enjoy this video, drop a like if you do, and first and foremost I want to clarify that by making this video I am not encouraging any of you guys to try these substances. This is me solely saying which ones I would like to try myself. Do not try this at home, I'm not encouraging any of this, it is not safe, this is simply for entertainment purposes without further ado well actually there is further ado ladies and gentlemen there's one thing i almost forgot if you guys are looking for the number one and most wonderful gravity bong on the market look no further than the gravitron from grav labs head over to the link in the description if you co use code for 2020 which is also in the description four and then the word 20 and then the number 20 at checkout, you get a nice little 20% off discount on the Gravitron. This is not sponsored. I'm plugging them because it's a quality product, baby. Hope you guys enjoy this video. Drop a like if you do. And without further ado, let's dive right into it. So, the top five substances that I would like to do in 2020. Now, I want to clarify by saying a couple things. The majority of these are things that I've never done. But there's a couple things on this list that I have done before. And the reason that those are on the list is because this is not a bucket list of like things I've never done. This is just a bucket list of substances that I want to visit or revisit in 2020. So coming in at our number five spot, we've got MDA or SAS, Sassafras, whatever you want to call it. Now, there's a couple reasons why this is my number five spot. First and foremost being that I was always a very big fan of Molly. But as time went on and I, I kind of experienced it more, the the magic of rolling really hard kind of went away and the negative effects uh, became much more profound and apparent, right? First off, my biggest pet peeve with Molly is the intensity of it. I feel like there's there's not a very good middle ground until you're coming down, right? You're either rolling really hard and your jaw's locked or you're just not quite feeling how you want to feel. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that's just a me thing, but uh, at least in my experience, I, I can never really find a nice middle ground until the come down starts when it comes to MDMA. But as far as I've heard about MDA, and I also want to clarify the things that I say about the substances I've never done, this is not fact, right? I'm literally basing these statements off of things that I've heard in conversation with my other crackhead friends, right? So do not take what I say about MDA or any of the other substances that I've never done on this list uh, as fact, right? Do your own research. But either way, uh, from what I've heard from friends, I used to have one buddy who was super duper into sass. Like he literally used to go pull bark off the fucking trees and make this shit on his own. It's ridiculous, right? And this guy gave me uh, one of the most in-depth talks about it I think I'd had. And what he told me is it's basically, uh, it's like Molly if you take the edge off is what he told me. He's like, dude, listen, you're still going to feel that like almost like hot chocolate feeling pumping through your blood, but you're not going to be like uncomfortable, jaw locked, like really sweating balls like that. Like you'll be sweating. Don't get me wrong. But he said a lot of the discomfort is gone. That's how he described it to me. Uh, and if that's the case, bro, if I can get the euphoria from rolling without having to give a fuck about sweating balls, ruining my shirt, stanking for when the inevitable point in the night comes when I get horny and I got to find another woman who's also on Molly. Listen, if this takes away that factor, count me the fuck in. I'm 100% down uh, to try some MDA this year. I, I think I'm not saying I will, but hey, if the opportunity presents itself, who knows? Coming in with number four is one that I've done in the past. Of course, shrooms. Now, honestly, I've been thinking lately, and I never really gave shrooms a fair chance, I feel like. Uh, I only did them once, and it was a higher dose than I should have done, you know? So, I, I right off the bat came into it tripping too hard with a, a higher than I should have taken dose. For my first time, I took about four grams of the shit. Uh, it was allegedly an eighth, but I know it was more than an eighth. Like, it was, it was definitely about four grams. But, nevertheless, realistically... You should only be taking, like, two your first trip, you know? Like, you don't need a fucking eighth to the dome your first time taking shrooms. And I feel like that is part of the reason why I never did them again. Because I took too much that first time. Because I was so used to taking LSD and so used to tripping on that. That I was like, oh, dude, whatever. Eh, fuck it, bro. And I, did, I didn't really go into it uh, respecting the substance, I guess you could. 
Shrooms are one I want to revisit really bad because I, I still kind of miss the like visuals. The visuals on shrooms are very different. On acid, it, it like it changes the visuals of what's already there, right? So like if you're looking at a color, it will enhance that color, right? Or it will uh, add some tracers to that color, right? On shrooms, it just completely changes what the fuck you're looking at, right? Like, when I was doing shrooms, it didn't look like the house was nice and colorful. It looked like the house was wiggling. Like, physically wiggling, dude. Like, shrooms were a really crazy visual experience for me. And I, I really want to re-explore that with a maybe a lower dose and see how I like it, you know, and maybe redose. Because I will say, on my the shroom trip that I did do, once I got past that peak of like really just tripping too hard, I actually had a really good time. Like on the come down, I felt great. So I think it's definitely something I could look into a little more. Coming in with the number three spot here, ladies and gentlemen. Quaaludes. Now everyone's gonna be like, dude, these don't fucking exist anymore. That is actually not true. I was doing a little Googling the other day, and I found out that there is actually uh, a version, a company that makes a version of Quaaludes for prescription in South Africa. Now, as far as I can tell, that is the only place in the world where these are still a thing. But Based off the little bits of research I've done, obviously, I've never spoken to someone who's done lewds. They're all, like, 60 years old, right? Because they're not a fucking thing unless you're in South Africa, right? And I live in the U.S., so I don't know anyone from South Africa uh, right off the bat, right? So, from what I've heard about quaaludes, it's kind of like if a, if a Benzo and Molly had sex. Like, from what I've been told and my understanding from Googling and such... Uh, my understanding is it's literally, it's like, it's, it's like if Xanax gave you like that, that euphoria that Molly gives you like that, that body high almost, you know? And it's apparently extremely fucking intense. I don't know a ton about Quaaludes, but honestly, I think I speak for most people out there when I say that the main reason I want to do this drug is the Wolf of Wall Street scene. Okay. I think there was a few of them. I think there... Wasn't there two? There was one where he was crawling to the Lambo, and then there was one where he was on the ship, I think. I think those were two lewd scenes. I don't know. There was a lot of fucking drugs in that movie. But uh, that that was definitely, like, the source of my interest in, in this substance. And recently, I found out that they're actually still a thing. So I've, I've been trying to do my research here and see if a, a South Africa trip could be booked. But no confirmation on that yet. So we'll move on over to the number two spot, ladies and gentlemen. Coming in at number two, the classic Godfather, LSD. Now, I've spoken on this pretty frequently recently in streams. I think I've even touched on it in videos and maybe even a tweet or two. Uh, so this is probably common knowledge to most of you guys, but acid is definitely on my bucket list for this year. I I don't know. you. In my opinion, with psychedelics, you really kind of uh, go through a phase where you want to do them or you don't. It's never like you just do them no matter what. You really have to be in the mindset where you're like, yeah, I want to trip, dude. And honestly, lately, I've just been kind of sitting around and being like, damn, man, the weather's beautiful. I have a nice backyard. There's a big, nice tree outside of my house. It would be pretty nice to go pop a tab and sit in my sunroom, you know? Like, honestly, I don't know. I've been thinking about it lately. And I, I think acid is definitely going to make uh, a comeback this year, for me at least. It's it's something that I've wanted to revisit a lot lately and something that I haven't touched in three years now. In fact, it's been longer than that. I haven't tripped since 2016, late 2016. So we're going on four years uh, since I've actually taken any acid, which in that case, it's been so fucking long, dude. I think I could pop one tab and go to Jupiter. Honestly, go to fucking Mars. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. I think once all, all the lockdown quarantine stuff kind of alleviates itself a little bit, if you will, then I'll, I'll definitely look into it more. Because I like, I like having my freedoms while I'm tripping. I like being able to, uh, you know, go out to the store if I want to or something, you know? Like, not, not literally doing that, but I like in my head having the knowledge that I can. You know, that's important when I'm tripping. The number one spot, something that I don't know if many of you guys knew that I wanted to do, 2CB. Ladies and gentlemen, 2CB is something that I don't think I've touched upon much, if ever, maybe here and there briefly. 
But this is one that recently has has really power climbed its way through my bucket list. As I've done more research, I've just become more and more interested in trying this substance. As far as I know, word of mouth and uh, the little bits of Googling I did, don't take this as fact, is this is essentially comparable to candy flipping if it were a drug, right? If, if you combined acid and molly and made it a drug, this is what you would get, I allegedly, right? And y'all know me. I love acid. I love molly. This sounds like the godfather of psychs for a guy like me. This sounds like something I need to experience, ladies and gentlemen. I need to fucking do this shit. There is absolutely... Listen, all the other drugs on this list, it's whatever, right? It, it's it's cool, you know? LSD, I've done it before. Streams, I've done it before. MDA, hey, I've done Molly. Quaaludes, hey, they're cool, but maybe not realistic. But 2CB, this, ladies and gentlemen, I'm making sure this happens this year. I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, my curiosity has peaked and I will definitely uh, be looking into 2CB uh, it just sounds like the perfect good time uh, kind of celebration substance right as far as I know it's really popular over in the UK and Europe but it isn't really a big thing here in the US like it's people know what it is but it's it's like a taboo drug you know if that makes sense so that's number one on the bucket list for sure but either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you guys want to see more videos like this one. Drop a like if you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to check out the Gravitron brought to you guys by Grav Labs and use code 42020. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.